this has been an extremely informative uh, discussion. Uh, before we end this discussion, I'd like to get some final thoughts from each of our panelists. Let's start with Tony. Yeah, you know, it's an exciting field. I'm very excited uh, to be in the field of kidney cancer. I can tell you we thought the field is going to stagnate since we only had VEGF inhibitor, VEGF receptor inhibitor, and mTOR inhibitor, and suddenly in a year we have three drugs. So this is exciting. I think the sequence is remained, remained to be defined, but in a year or less may not be a relevant question because all these drugs are moving to the frontline setting. And I, more than ever, I think a third point I want to make, we need a biomarker. Are we going to get it? I think we are uh, more, we have more um, ammunition in terms of, yes, getting it, because unlike the first generation studies, now every trial that is ongoing or just finished accrual is really getting enough blood, enough tissue. Some of these tissue are fresh. Sometimes, uh, you know, blood to... Uh, look at circulating free DNA. So we have more material to work in uh, to define the biomarker. So I am um, quite uh, encouraged by that. Michael? I think those are great points by Tony. So basically moving towards precision medicine to develop biomarkers to find the right drug for the right patient at the right time. And one thing I want to just make sure is included in that is what I'm calling precision survivorship. So thinking not only about the benefit for the patient in terms of their disease, but thinking about their quality of life. And I think it's very important to continue to generate evidence along the lines of that discussed on those patients in whom active surveillance is important, in whom intermittent dosing may be used, um, and certainly generating evidence about how we may do dose reductions, uh, whether it's using PKs, again, to keep the patient's quality of life in the discussion uh, as far as the, the precision medicine initiative. Eric? Yeah, so these really are exciting times, Bob, but I think that uh, the practice of medicine in terms of how we actually take care of patients um, hasn't changed. And I think it's even more important in 2017 to be able to talk and listen to our patients, to be able to creatively manage toxicity and creatively interpret how a progression is or isn't happening in conjunction with the patient. And, and we really do need to, I think, define success in new ways using new tools uh, to, to be able to, to understand whether or not patients are benefiting. David. So I can't really add anything, but it's been a two decade journey for me where I used to talk to patients about whether we could get them beyond six months on subcutaneous interferon. And I think we've made immense progress. And I think it's been a privilege to be on that journey. What's great now is that the journey is not finished, but we have a lot of challenges, both therapeutically and also with the science, and we need to keep addressing those. And I think what I'd like to say is, is to just, um, to both the patients that hear our conversations, as well as our colleagues in the communities that practice and treat kidney cancer patients, that uh, I hope what you've heard today is the complexities, uh, the balanced discussion, the recognition that in some places there aren't the answers that we would like, although we continue to strive uh, to get them, and the recognition that if you're a patient or a doctor, um, it, it is never a bad thing to get another opinion from someone who spends their life, like my colleagues, uh, spends their life thinking about kidney cancer and how to uh, address, answer, and ask the right questions for the individual patient. I think now more than ever, uh, we've done a great job in approving over a dozen agents, more to come, but I, I think to Michael's point, the right agent at the right time for the right patient for the right outcome is what we're all striving for. Thank you all for your contributions to this discussion. On behalf of the panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be both useful and informative. Thank you.